Story 1. A while back pre-COVID-19, while traveling for work, I had an interesting interaction on a flight, and while exiting the airport, I was a bit late to board, and a man was sitting in my seat. When I mentioned he was in my seat, he rolled his eyes, pulled out his wipes, cleaned the seat and tray, and proceeded to switch seats. He put on his noise-canceling headphones and talked on his phone throughout the safety demonstration, even after being told not to, and continued to talk during takeoff. He never turned off his phone or switched to airplane mode and resumed talking as soon as he got a signal again. He only pulled off his headphones to explain to me that the armrest was his and his alone. I didn't argue much, as I had the aisle, my own armrest, and plenty of room. After we disembarked, we eventually ended up in the same restroom. He came in still talking on the phone, grabbed some toilet paper, came out, got some soap from the dispenser, went back in, and wiped down his seat. He made his little toilet paper nest and sat down to do his business. I finished washing my hands and used some paper towels to dry them. Instead of discarding them into the waste bin, I made the best three-pointer shot of my life right into his stall, interrupting his little restroom phone call. I quickly left the area. His angry shouting at me has stayed with me as a cherished memory, and I wanted to share it with you all. Story 2 This is an old story from my high school days. In my second year of high school, my class was somewhat special because we were testing out a new curriculum. My class, in particular, had a new teacher who was covering for the usual teacher on maternity leave. In high school, I had a reputation mostly as a slacker in classes. I really liked or could at least tolerate most teachers. It wasn't uncommon for me to achieve around 80%, but if I disliked the class or teacher, I would do the minimum effort to pass or just disregard it. Our new curriculum focused on nationalism and had many French references. The teacher was from a part of my country that still believes they are French, and it has a reputation for being pretentious. I did not like this teacher or this class. He focused more on anything French-related in class, and even when we moved past the French parts of the curriculum, he would constantly circle back to them. Obviously, I became bored and tired of it and just stopped attending class. Apparently, the class as a whole wasn't doing well, with the average dropping to 45%, so the class was essentially failing. I had a handout with the test schedule, so I would walk in, take the test, and leave. I was called into the teacher's office one day because apparently I was doing too well. I was scoring about 70% on most of my tests, and my classmate who sat in front of me was scoring similarly, so the teacher was sure I was cheating. How else could I be in the top five in the class when I hadn't shown up in two weeks? He thought he had caught me. Except it was all untrue. I just read the textbook, and apparently that was enough to pass. He told me I had two options. Either one admit to cheating and turn myself in, or two he would rewrite the test, and I could take it during lunch. I told him I chose option two. I came in during lunch, and he sat there eating his meal while I took the test. After I finished, he made me sit there as he smugly graded my test. His smile was gone by the time he finished. I scored 80% on the new test. He looked at me and asked how I could pass when I didn't show up or do any homework. I looked at him and told him all I did was read the textbook. The lunch bell rang and I packed up my belongings and started to walk out. One of my classmates asked where I was going because his class was my next class. I looked right into the eyes of this teacher and said, I'm gonna go take my lunch since someone accused me of cheating and made me miss mine. He looked away and said it was fine. I only returned to his class when necessary after that and wasn't accused of cheating again. He knew that he had lost, and when one of your best students learns more when they don't show up, what else can he do? Story 3 in college, I had a neighbor who will henceforth be called Benny, like that troublemaker from New Vegas. This neighbor was not a considerate one. For example, he watched TikTok at 3 a.m., connected to his Bluetooth speaker, which he so politely pointed directly at the wall to improve sound quality. He piled his garbage in front of my door when it didn't fit on the sides of his door, forcing me to cut a path out when I wanted to leave. He dumped bodily fluids from a bottle under my door when he thought I reported him for one of his many offenses against the people on the floor. He was an absolute nuisance of a neighbor. I was, however, fairly friendly with one of his roommates. 
On one crisp November evening, this roommate let me in on a little social experiment he was conducting. In Benny's closet, in a black garbage bag, was a pumpkin from Halloween. Originally, it was just supposed to smell up the closet until Benny found it, but Benny never did find it. Move-out day was in late December. I was packing up in my room, and my roommate came back and said, Hey, what's up with the bag of soup outside? After some initial confusion, we discovered that this fine bag of moldy, wet, desecrated remains was from the pumpkin. We decided that the best course of action for this beloved sack of soup was to place it caringly and carefully in front of Benny's door since he must have misplaced it. Benny was not fond of this development. He knocked on my door, banging like the headboard of a wedding bed, and demanded to know why I had put my garbage in front of his door. So, I reminded him that it was actually his garbage. In fact, it was actually his compost at that point. Obviously, he apologized for the misunderstanding, took out his own garbage, left me alone, and we both went our separate ways, since we only needed to tolerate each other for a few hours. No, actually, believe it or not, he balled it up and threw it at my head, the only logical choice, really. This angry water balloon sailed through the sky, through my door, and into my bed frame. I readied a nearby jar of salsa for the coming battle but he had already turned tail and waddled back to his room as quickly as his enormous girth would allow. Now that the history is set, it's time for the revenge part you've all been waiting for. I went over to the pumpkin, which luckily was still contained in its fine plastic vessel, so I crept ever so slowly towards Benny's room, pumpkin bag in hand, shot put style. When Benny opened the door, we made brief eye contact. I saw him, he saw me, he saw Excalibur in my hand, and at that moment, he knew his fate. And as he moved to close the door, I released the pumpkin on its most holy journey. I can say that I understand how Olympians feel when they break a record with a Herculean act of strength as the pumpkin sailed through the door into the side of Benny's chair and exploded as furiously as one might atop a toilet on Taco Tuesday. The black fireball, the stench, everywhere, all over everything. The ceiling, the floor, his clothes, his heater, him, everything. Like the morning after a fresh snowfall, if that snow was black as night and smelled of rotting fruit. The best part? His roommate and everything he owned were shielded by what I can only explain as angels sent to protect him from my righteous wrath. Story 4 This happened this week. I am an aircraft engine mechanic, and this week, we were attaching several engines to a wing. I had never worked on this aircraft before, so I was to assist. My lead told me to get into the instruction manual and read up on what we needed to do. After looking for it for several minutes, I sent him a text and asked which publications it was in. This is where the condescending comments started coming in. The final one included a picture of the section heading to give me a hint so I could figure it out. The comments did not improve once I met back with him and the other lead. My lead was especially proud of his comment with the picture because he kept bringing it up and bragging about it. Finally, the petty revenge. Several minutes later, we realized that our parts kit was missing items. So the two leads and I started searching for the part numbers in the publications. As time passed, they became increasingly frustrated. Finally, I ended up finding the parts first and told them that I had found them. Both of them said, finally, and went to look at my screen. I promptly turned the screen away and said, no. I will take a picture and send it to you, that way you can learn to find it on your own. The look on their faces was priceless. The cherry on top was when my lead said loudly, well, I told you what section it was in. Then I got to explain to everyone that he had the wrong section, and I found it in an entirely different one. In the end, we both laughed about it, but it felt really good. Story 5 a few years ago in my neighborhood, we had two kids, one in fifth grade and one in second or third grade, I can't remember. The fifth grader will be known as Jerk, and his little brother will be Jerk's brother, he was not really a jerk. Then there's me and my friend. Jerk really cared about his brother and protected him as if he were everything. Our neighborhood had a little island of prairie we live in Iowa, and prairies are everywhere that split the road into two and back again at the entrance to our neighborhood. It had two trees and a sign with the name of our neighborhood on it. We get boiling summers and freezing winters, and in the winter, we get a lot of snow. 
The snow that year was in big pieces, a bit bigger than the size of a very old TV. After we got off our bus, we started walking and talking. While we were talking, Jerk took a chunk of snow, ran across the island, and dumped it over my head. I was angry but kept talking with my friend. Then my friend got dumped on, and I was even more upset. This continued for about two minutes. Then Jerk's brother got in on it, and that was when I struck. My shoes, socks, pants, and shirt were wet I had no snow pants on, and I was done with this. Jerk's brother ran across the island with a chunk of snow and stopped on the sidewalk. He froze and dropped his chunk when he saw me making a ball of snow and packing it together with all of my might. For people who are not familiar with snow, you might not know this, but when you do what I did, it creates a heavy ball of hardness and pain if it hits you. I am a great hitter, but the worst thrower ever to play baseball. So when I threw it, it missed and hit him square where it really hurt. Luck granted me a sensitive area hit. Everyone's head turned. I saw the life drain from his face. I still think back to him dropping to his knees. I had a new problem now, his brother. He did what was basically a bull charge from Mike Tyson's punch-out great game, and no, I am not 45 years old. He tackled me, and my friend had to pull me away from his weak punches. He doesn't punch like bald bull, that's for sure. I bolted to my driveway and caught my breath with my friend in tow. We chatted for a second, and I walked inside and celebrated my victory against Jerk. Jerk is no longer a jerk, and we get along. He moved away, sadly, and I miss him. He was fun when we got along. Also, I feel bad for Jerk's brother because he just followed Jerk's orders. Lesson of this story, don't make me cold, wet, and upset at the same time. Story 6 This is actually my mum's story, but I thought it belonged here, so here it goes. My mum was a pretty good student, mostly B's and C's with the occasional A. She would never use the restroom or medical room just to get out of lessons. Her French teacher I'll call her witch had favorite students that she was nice to and acted like the rest weren't there. My mum was not one of her favorites. The revenge, the last lesson on a Friday was French. My mum was feeling nauseous, but she didn't think it was anything, so she just brushed it off and went to her last lesson. About halfway through the lesson, it got worse. She was feeling dizzy and hot. Her friend who was at the desk next to hers leaned over and asked if she was okay because she was going pale, so she raised her hand and asked to go to the medical room, and of course, the witch thought she was trying to get out of lessons and gave her a short lecture on the importance of staying in class. Five minutes later, my mum put her hand up again and asked to go to the medical room, and again, she said no. She put her hand up again, and this time her friend backed her up and pointed out that she was going pale. The witch told my mum to come up to the front of the class to her desk. So my mum did, and the witch then got right in her face and yelled at her not to make another sound. And if she did, she would get an after-school detention with her. The witch then pointed to my mum's seat and told her to sit down. About ten minutes from the end of the lesson, my mum got that feeling you get when you know it's too late. She vomited all over her desk, the floor, and her friend. The witch looked shocked when it happened, and there were still ten minutes left of the lesson, so the witch had to clean up her desk. My mum didn't find it funny at the time as she had just thrown up and felt very ill and sorry, but now she remembers it and says it was worth it to see the look on the witch's face when all this happened suddenly.